we knew from an early age that uh, Mark had got uh, learning difficulties. The reality is that when you've got a child in uh, care education, uh, life is wonderful. And then when they reach 19, it all comes to a crashing halt. And it catches you by surprise. There's no preparation for it, unfortunately. And all of a sudden, you um, are looking around for where they're going to spend probably the rest of their life. Mark needed to have sort of full-time care and went into a wonderful uh, organisation uh, in Birmingham. Uh, which handled him very much on a sort of 24-7 basis. From then on, really, it, the autism um, uh, manifested itself as, as it can do with, with the, uh, the disorder. When Mark um, is unsettled, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a strong, he's a very strong man. You know, he has issues regarding glass, mirrors. When he's been very unhappy and unsettled, um, he'll refer to people as ugly or himself as ugly. Frustrating behaviour um, and uh, a general uh, difficulty with trying to translate uh, the world around him into something that he could deal with. I remember one day he came come out of um, the service that he was living in, ran to another uh, front door of a, another home and was trying to smash his head through the bottom pane of glass in the door. And there was me and another member of staff trying to prevent him from doing that, which was extremely difficult. But you could see how distressed he was, but he wasn't able to articulate exactly what was going on at the time, really. Two uh, managers from Pepperbury went up to Birmingham to see Mark, um, got to know him, um, came to the conclusion that, yes, uh, he'd be well placed at Pepperbury. We knew he, he obviously wasn't happy with where he was and with what was going on in his life. So although initially, you know, his, his um, behaviour was quite difficult, not as intense as that, but it was still quite difficult, he, he, uh, he settled. I, I think certainly at Pepperbury, um, they very quickly figured out what Mark's needs were and, and you know, um, how to sort of reach out and, and um, you know, give him the things that, um, you know, make his life enjoyable and, and stable. Mark has a spectacular room. Um, he's always loved views. Um, and he's got a lovely view over the valley towards the farm. Um, every year at Biggin Hill Air Show, uh, it's known that Mark, you know, he, he's always loved aircraft. And so there's always a visit to Biggin Hill or Head Corn, um, which again is very much you know, part of you know, Mark's life. Um, a place like Peppenbury that have got the skills, that are very keen to work with the family. Um, is, um, th is the solution to a very difficult problem um, in the lives of, of some families. My daughter Sarah has Perlman syndrome uh, and a little bit of cerebral palsy and she has some behavioural problems um, uh, that mean that she can be quite aggressive at times. She's non-verbal, um, she's a full-time wheelchair user. Well, we knew there were issues with Sarah at birth, and um, so she's had a lifetime of, of uh, uh, issues. Quite a lot of time in hospital, uh, all her time in special schools, and I suppose we started looking at uh, potential homes for Sarah when she was about 20 and we started to visit Peckenbury and talk to uh, Roger Gibson and uh, have a look around and uh, Sarah moved here when, two, and, two years ago. Sarah is a complex adult and um, you know it was less than a year before she started calling Peckenbury home. You know and that is a great sign in its own right and you know it's very important for her siblings and her parents to know that she's comfortable and it's a great sign that Sarah wanted to go home which was away from my house and to the space that she now lives in uh, you know yes yeah, so the change is 
pretty dramatic because five years ago um, I either worked or I was a full-time carer and you know the impact on myself, my wife, Sarah's siblings was extraordinarily high you know because you couldn't um, you know in the in Sarah's waking hours we were her carers and when she was asleep you know you couldn't relax that much because you knew that at 6 30 the next morning she'd be up and you'd have to be up and the caring day would start again and I'd just be a full-time carer you know we'd all hate it so uh, the difference between Sarah being at home as a young adult and Sarah living here having her own life is is dramatic. I think you know every parent wants to see their uh, children become independent and and capable young adults and in Sarah's instance um, she's absolutely become a lot more independent since moving into Peppenbury um, there are three things that she enjoys. Um, she's a very keen shopper and uh, there are two threads to that. She, um, she enjoys doing the uh, regular shopping for her household unit, such so visits to Tesco's and um, uh, other places. Uh, and secondly, she loves um, buying her own clothes and sorting things out and, and I'd say the um, the second thing that she likes is horse riding um, and uh, she does that once a week and then Sarah's a very social person so although she can't speak she can communicate with her hands and using picture books and the printed word. The strength of Peppenbury you can look at from the top and you can look at it from the bottom and you know it's the people who have those um, tough dealings with adults with behavioural problems uh, who deserve enormous amounts of credit and it's the chief executive Roger and his team that set the tone of the place and you know whichever way you look whether it's top down or bottom up um, you see smiling faces and a positive can-do attitude and uh, and that's great. You're given training, you're, you're taught things, you're not just you know, just sort of almost thrown to the wolves. You know, there's a real investment in the staff team here because if you don't invest in the staff, how are, how are they going to actually be able to do their jobs properly in supporting people if they don't know or don't understand? So, you know, training is a, a vital part and I think that's one of the, the good things about Peppenbury and, and why we retain our staff. This service user became uh, very obsessed. They were very obsessed all day um, with their puzzle. The obsession moved from the puzzle onto uh, messing about with, with staff's hair, you know, asking to touch it. And then it moved on to actually pulling it, pulling staff's hair, which is obviously sort of very distressing, trying to, you know, manage those situations, trying to unlock a grip from staff, a member of staff's hair is extremely difficult. That was an extreme set of challenges that he presented. Um, you know, actually physically injuring staff. That carried on for quite a few hours um, and resulted in um, defecating and smearing it all on himself. You feel you're standing there watching this guy just with faeces on his hands and it makes you feel sort of like neglectful but there's nothing you can do because you, every time you go in he becomes aggressive. But that, that would have maybe ten years ago happened every week. Um, and now it might happen once every two or three months. So, you know, the, the behaviours are still there, but they're, they're reduced. And I think that's, you know, a lot to do with the consistency and, and, and the work and the training and, and the, the staff team all pulling together and knowing and actually understanding him and actually reading the situations. She's always been um, very loving and 
caring. She just likes walking, <laughs> she likes people, and she likes to go out rides in the car. We take her out and maybe to the seaside or shops. Um, she's always had learning difficulties. You'd be able to send her down shops um, just to get basic things, milk, bread, perhaps a paper. And when she was 20, uh, she had um, a blip, a major blip, as we call it. Um, she used to do tasks like making tea, and it just, just one night she went to make some tea and she was just in the kitchen and she was just standing and didn't know where to start and it was like she'd forgotten and she she didn't know anyone she couldn't do anything she just almost overnight she it was like her brain was wiped she's getting a bit better now and we was told that it would be a long time before she got anywhere near to what she was then so it's a very slow progress. She comes to Peppenberry now. She's been here about eight years. Um, she loves very much, so. Um, and they've done a great deal for her, so. You know, there are times when Philippa becomes really distressed. You know, and she will really, really scream. It just come out of nowhere. She just starts screaming. I mean, she could, she could be in a car, actually. She's, it could, she just could be sitting and talking normal and then just going to a screaming. And it's, you know, it, it sounds quite terrifying if you're, if you're walking around the site. It does sound quite terrifying, really. She's not able to articulate what it's about. Um, and the staff are, you know, absolutely, you know, superb in, you know, reassuring her um, and, you know, sort of calming the situation down. It gives us more time, although my husband's at work, um, he works for himself, so um, but in the day. But it gives us time to be able to do things that we can't do when Philippa's around. Um, and if there's any problems, we just we can contact them easy enough. Very happy child, wasn't he? He looked like mm, a child. A lot of the photographs we have of him in those days Beautiful blonde hair, smiling. Being the first child, he was going to be a brain surgeon and, you know, an astronaut and everything else. So I fed him as much protein and as I could to make him brainy, not realising it was damaging his brain. So, you know. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I made him like he was. It was female cutaneria. And it's the phenyl aniline in protein that was damaging his brain, killing the brain cells, because there was too much. He used to bite, bite his arm, or he used to bite his wrist, and he used to smash light switches, just bash them. They had to put all steel ones in to stop him. With the self-harm, you know, the punching of, you know, walls, um, you know, sort of uh, choking himself, you know, sort of almost strangling himself out of frustration. And He'd send, set off the fire alarm, you know, in temper because nothing was happening, there was nothing to do, we weren't going anywhere. When Russell moved to Peppenbury, um, they saw all what Peppenbury could offer. When he came here, it was structured. You know, having an active day, uh, engaging him in, you know, positive things. Those behaviours have reduced massively. Well, they haven't had any any bad happenings for about ten, what, four or five years. Mm, no, not, since he's no, been here. not since he's been here. He gets to go to do his crafts. He loves doing his crafts, making something or other. He's in a house where there are some guys who sit about watching television, and that's fine. But there's other ones who are always up to something or other. We don't have to worry because all of our problems have been sorted in one go. Ever since he's been in care, I've felt guilty as a mother. I now what? don't feel guilty about Russell being here.